three, two, one. Back on the show this week in America. Interesting segment coming up. We're talking about something that's happening and has been happening for a while in New York City, Los Angeles, Boston, other cities across the country. It's a great way to get out and see the city at a different time of day. After dark bicycle rallies in New York City. They've been going on for a number of years. Put on by a group called Time's Up. That's a 20-year-old environmental group. Bill DiPaolo is with us on the program today. He is the founder. He is the executive director of the group. And once a month on a Friday, they will go through Central Park for a midnight ride. Bill, thank you for joining us on the program. Well, thank you for having me. What a great idea. I mean, it's exercise. It's great on the environment. It's a great way to get out and meet people. In fact, I understand that's how this got started. This was sort of a different way to spend your, your Friday night. That's right. We thought, you know, it would be great for people to get, you know, some some exercise, some entertainment, and some education all at the same time. Starts at 10 o'clock, the first Friday, I believe, the first Friday of every month in uh, in New York. It happens at various rides late at night in other cities, Los Angeles, Boston, other cities around the country. How many people do you get out for a ride? It depends on the ride. There are several different types of rides. There's historic rides. There's rides to uh, Coney Island amusement parks, and then there's nature rides. But one of the larger rides is the one um, where, where you have the most densest population to get people into the park, something like uh, in Manhattan and in Brooklyn in Manhattan, the one you mentioned, uh, the Moonlight Ride, which goes, through, which goes right through the famous uh, Central Park. So that ride gets um, sometimes up to 100 people. That's amazing. And there are people who are listening probably saying, wow, would you go through Central Park at night? And you're saying there are safety in numbers. When you're going through on the bicycle with a group of people, it's a very pleasant, tranquil atmosphere. Yeah, Central Park is actually uh, very safe now. Uh, when we started the ride over 10 years ago, it probably wasn't the safest. And, but you're right. We do have um, it's some, some of our rides we have, like, walkie-talkies at the front and the back, just in case someone has a flat. And there's occasional stops when we, when we go together. And the rides, uh, sometimes they're all together, but sometimes there's narrow paths, so it's like one by one. But they're all pretty safe because you're right, we're traveling together. Bill DePaulo is with us on the program. He's the founder of Times Up. That's an environmental group in New York City, sponsors of the, the Moonlight Rides, which they have uh, once a month. Uh, Bill mentioned one through Central Park. Uh, they'll have other courses that are set up. By the way, their website is Times dash up dot org or you can link on to ours this week in america dot us and get information on what they do in new york city and possibly something you can do in your particular city bill and looking at some of the information uh, i get mixed messages in terms of the city and, and backing and i understand the police really hasn't been all that excited about doing this that's right in some cities um there's different reactions to non-polluting transportation as it's seen in new york city that there hasn't been the most friendliest reaction but we're hoping that will change in the future. Um, cycling is growing in New York City, and when cycling grows and different ideas come about, change comes about, and sometimes that's hard for people to accept. The problem in New York City is, you know, it's a very crowded city, and there are different ways to get around. They need infrastructure, and infrastructure means the city needs to be redesigned to accommodate the increased cycling. And we're hoping the city could see the benefits of cycling and create this infrastructure. But in the meantime, it's kind of a struggle, and a lot of bicyclists are getting harassed and arrested. When you had the transit strike a while back, did a lot of people realize, you know, I had to take the bike in out of necessity, and it was sort of an enjoyable way to get around? It was, and I think um, through, you know, 9-11, the transit strikes, uh, the blackouts, you've seen the bicycle always come through as the hero that saves the day. Um, it's always there. It's human-powered. It can survive. It's very small. It can get into small gaps. It's almost like, like water. It seems to run through the cracks whenever there's a traffic jam or, or something like that. And when, you know, sometimes the city does shut down through gridlock or through tragedies, and the bicycle always prevails. Yeah, if you're sitting there in traffic during afternoon rush hour, you're burning through a whole lot of gas. If you're on a bicycle, you're probably zipping in and out of traffic and home before these people go three, four blocks. This is true. There's sometimes these uh, races to work. Um, you know, different ways to get into the city. And usually the bicycle does win. Uh, just beats out the subway. The subway is a great way to get around, too. <laughs> yeah, you've said bicycling shouldn't be viewed by cities as a problem, but as a solution to a city's problem. How are cities around the country, New York, where you are at, but you're familiar with what's going on in, in other cities around the country, how are they at, uh, at maybe incorporating more bicycles, bicycle traffic in their cities? Well, Portland seems to be, in America, the number one city. Now, in Europe, if you know, if anybody's traveled, you'll see places like Germany, Amsterdam, London. 
have incredible infrastructure to support bicycling and non-polluting transportation, and you'll even see how the subways connect to the airports. America is a little slow in coming and, you know, kind of built upon uh, oil and cars. So it's slow in coming, but we hope that, you know, things are going to change in the future because it's such a wonderful thing just to get out there on your bicycle. And in cities, a lot of people, it's hard for probably people to imagine hearing this show, but in cities, a lot of people don't use their car. So uh, being in a city like New York City, not too many people use their car. Yeah, and if you dri- even have a car, I mean. Well, yeah, and if you drive into the city, you're paying what fifty, sixty dollars a day to park your car in the city. Right, it's incredibly expensive. Public space is a, a big issue, uh, and you know, parking is a big issue. And, and sometimes you have to get up and move your car, even if you do find a spot. You know, at, at these ungodly hours in the morning, you have to go park it on one side of the street one day, park it on another side of the street. We've got about 20 seconds left. How safe is riding in big cities during the daytime? At night, less traffic when these the, the rallies are organized. How safe is it during the daytime? It isn't that safe, but what's happening is due to the increased ridership, it becomes safer because people get used to seeing cyclists. More cyclists are riding, ah, more okay. bike lanes, more bridges open. So it's getting safer. Bill, thank you so much for joining us. And I like somebody hawking in the background. Bill said after he gets done with the interview, he's going to hop on his bike and go enjoy the, uh, the afternoon in, in New York City. Bill DePaulo has been our guest. He's the founder and director of TimesUp.org. That's Times-Up.org. You can log on to our website, ThisWeekInAmerica.us, and uh, link up and get more information from Bill on what's going on uh, with this particular program in New York City. This has been This Week in America. Sean Bratton, executive producer. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, in charge of web development. Otto Bache, director of engineering. This Week in America, produced by Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC, and distributed nationally by Syndication Networks Corporation, Morton Grove, Illinois. Thanks, everybody, for being part of This Week in America. Please join us next time.